Hey family, Pastor Artie here. I'm coming to you tonight because I just wanted to do a video. I got some news today that a dear friend of mine, Big Bob, passed away due to complications, maybe because of diabetes. I'm not sure. We're still trying to find out, and I want to know. You know, now here's the thing. Big Bob was such a gentle giant. He was six foot eight. But you know, I remember when I first met him, he was at Calvary Chapel Open Door where I was helping out the ministry with my father-in-law, Pastor Roger Stallhut. And I am a child evangelist. I was born doing evangelism when, I mean, you know, not born doing it, but when I went into ministry, I immediately started doing evangelism. I, that's what God called me to do. And he, I have to say, he did good through me doing that. <laughs> I would take my puppets and I'd minister to children on the streets in LA and the housing projects and places you wouldn't even want to go because of the, the danger of getting shot by gang members. But I would go out. When I was at Open Door, guess what? Big Bob pulled along my side and he goes, what can I do to help with these kids? And I said, well, I used to have clowns. And he said, oh, okay. He went out and he bought a clown costume. Now, I used to take him in my car and he could barely fit, but we'd go out to these areas in, in Anaheim and in um, down through, uh, yeah, it was down through Anaheim. And we would minister to the kids in housing projects in Anaheim. And it was so funny because we had set days we would go out there, we'd go to the motels and stuff, and we had set days of going. And we would get there and all the kids would gather. And the minute Bob walked out of the car for the first time, all the kids did this. They looked and they just went. They never seen a clown that big with a big red nose and a red wig. And Bob just immediately gravitated toward the children. And it reminded me of that scripture in the Bible, in the, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, where Jesus told his disciples, forbid not the children to come unto me because such are the, the kingdom of heaven. And you know, he talked a lot about kids and, and loving on children. And we would do that every Friday night, Bob and I would go out or every Wednesday we'd go out to different, different areas and minister to children with the puppets and he clowning around with me and, and we'd tell jokes and we'd make, and the kids would just laugh. Oh my God, they just love Big Bob. Here he was, the world's biggest clown, six foot eight. And he would get out there. But you know, there was a sad side to his story. Like I said, he was attending a church, a Calvary in, in Anaheim. And I hate to say it, but the pastors there really treated him bad. They would put him down. They would push him to anger. You know, and I feel sorry. I, I hope that those pastors there, my father-in-law included, my ex-father-in-law now, thank God. But I hope they think about what they did to this man. You know, the senior pastor bankrupt him, actually took all of his money out of his savings account because he said, I want him to become reliant upon the church. Well, he had money, he didn't have to be reliant on the church, and I think that was bad. That was the start of me getting ready to leave because I knew that they weren't following God's word. You know, they didn't care one iota about what this book says. They didn't care, and they pushed him to the brink so much so they wound up attending a Korean church and they saw what was in him, the same thing I saw. Now people, they didn't like Bob because Bob was rough. He was rough around the edges. You know, he'd say what he mean and mean what he said. You know, if he said he was gonna throttle you through a wall, he would throttle you through a wall. I would watch out, he was a big boy. But this one pastor at this Korean church saw what I saw. A willingness and a tenderness to want to spread the Word of God to others. He used to wear t-shirts that said, Jesus love you. Here, here he was, a six foot eight man. He was the biggest billboard for Christ I've ever seen. And he was a walking, talking billboard because he never failed to tell people about the love of Christ. Even those that hurt him and talked ill of him, which just happened to be the leadership at the church. How sad is that? 
I mean, I even left because of this, because of them not wanting to do what God wanted to do, but they wanted to do their thing. And I told Bob, I said, you don't need that. You, you, have, you have a better path ahead of you. And he wound up in a halfway house because of alcohol addiction, but yet he never lost his love for Christ. He would memorize the Word of God. He was a walking encyclopedia of God's Word. But a lot of it he didn't understand. So he would call me weekly, sometimes two or three times a week. And we would discuss and sit down and talk about the Word. He's the only man, aside from my other buddy, who not, doesn't talk to me anymore because he has issues about what I say and what I post. But that's okay. That's neither here nor there. I'm still praying for his ministry. I hope he's praying for mine. And he did the same thing to Bob, but I don't give up on people. You know, I see what God sees. God says, forbid them not to come unto him because they're like children. And I saw God's love in Bob's heart. You have to have love in your heart to go out and minister to children dressed up like a clown. You know, I had to have the love of God's heart to go out and minister to kids with puppets. And a lot of you people out there, you know that. I've taken my puppetry and taught puppetry to several ministries, several children's ministries. I used to speak at the Calvary Children's Conferences every year on puppetry. And I'm still available to do that. You can still call me. I'll still come out. But you know what? Bob was one in a million. He had, he, was a, he had a heart of a gentle giant. And he would sit there and love on these kids. He couldn't get down on the ground with them, but he would, he would do things. He'd play games with them. He, he'd joke, and, and we would do funny things. We'd interact together, and we'd joke with each other. And the kids would love it. They would laugh. And then he would get some kids together, and he would share with them about the love of Jesus after I've spoken and invited Jesus into their hearts. Bob would get in there and just put the lid on it by showing them how to pray, how to read the Word of God. He did more than just clown around. And I appreciated that. He was a great asset to reaching our city ministries. He was a great asset. And he'll be forever missed because he was my best friend. You know, I'm going to miss those phone calls. He would call at the most crazy times. My wife and I would be sitting down to dinner, and he would call. <laughs> and I'd have to tell him, Bob, I'm eating dinner. I'll call you back as soon as I get home. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. Okay, God bless you guys. Tell Linda hi. You know, he was always so upbeat, no matter what he went through. No matter what he went through. And now I can only think about him rejoicing with his Lord and giving praise to God, his Savior, the one he lived for and talked about the most. Today, family, I ask you to pray for the family. He has a sister, he has a brother, he has a son. Pray for them. Pray for those of us who were closest to him. I can think of, you know, Michelle Tobacco and, and Michelle Inch and myself. We were the closest to Bob ever. And he would still visit Calvary Chapel Open Door, and I know he would go there and still love on these people as much as they just talked negative about him and put him down and talked behind his back. And the reason why I know this and I can say it is because I was there listening to them. How dare they do that to a child of God? So, pray for us because we're missing our best friend. One of the best people I know that's ever ministered to children and wanted to minister. Like I said, he was going to a Korean church and the pastor recognized enough that he could share the Word of God with the people going through addictions. And he would do a study like every other week or every three weeks with the addiction group and share Jesus with them and cause them to read the Bible and get the Word into their heart. He was an amazing man. Way better than me. So pray for Bob's family. Pray for the Moyers. Pray, pray for his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. May God bless you all. May he look upon you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace today. In the midst of our loss, we look to him. I love you guys. I'll talk to you real soon. God bless you. God love you. Bye-bye.